Technology has always brought man to the front of a new era. Old religions die and new religions are born. And now we all have arrived at a turning point in history. The VOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. That's what's outlined in an internal NSA document leaked by Edward Snowden that focuses on games and virtual worlds. Now, if your knowledge of the video game universe begins and ends with Frogger, don't worry, we will break it down for you. Brain-to-machine interfaces open up the possibility of avatar technology. Not simply controlling an external limb or a computer screen, but controlling an entire artificial you, allowing you to be effectively in two places at the same time. We talk often about the quantum computers, the kind of ability they've got to map and model humanity itself because of this internet of things that is all around us now as well. We're feeding all of our information back into this quantum computer that's basically got a virtual world where all of us have a digital avatar in there they're able to manipulate the digital avatar in a virtual world and that's actually translated to effects in the real world they are building false realities into which they want to induct you so they can play god there are an enormous number mind-bogglingly large number of parallel realities as real as this one that have different consistent histories. So imagine a world where all of the laws of physics as we know them are obeyed, but different decisions were made along the way. Different decisions at the level of tiny microscopic particles, different decisions all the way up to what you just chose to eat for lunch, and whether you chose to come to the session or not. This has been going in parallel development to the model numbers of the D-Wave computers. They work lockstep because the adiabatic quantum computers runs the sentient world simulation. And again, we've been tracking the company D-Wave as well as its connection to Google and NASA and Lockheed Martin as well. These are all companies that have invested in the D-Wave. Which also encompasses Palantir, which we have talked about. This is the new surveillance system that has subsystems all built within it from the intelligence agencies around the world. So SWS is what is manipulating people. And Kev, you said it, the avatars and the nodes, when those are manipulated digitally in the simulation, it manifests physically in the human brain and the physical body outside of the SWS. It is like pulling strings. It is like a puppet on a string. What these people have done is turned this technology into a video game. And that is, is exactly how they approach it. They approach it as though they are playing a cross between Sid Meier's civilization on their computer and Sims, where they are controlling all of civilization and also controlling people on the individual level. Now this DEA program has been dubbed the Special Operations Division, or SOD, and it's comprised of over two dozen partner partnership agencies, including the FBI, CIA, NSA, Internal Revenue Service, and the Department of Homeland Security. Much of the, the SOD's work is it's classified, and an official um, when officials have asked that its precise location be identified, they won't give it up. It's yeah. somewhere in Virginia, but they don't want to say where exactly it is. What are your thoughts on this? The location of, uh, of somewhere, I, I'm really not sure why this is. People know where the NSA is, people know where the CIA headquarters are, and we, people know where the president vacations. I really don't understand this overclassification at all. Do we have any idea how many agents might be playing this game, these games at any one time? It seems to have been quite a big operation. The CIA, the FBI and the Pentagon even had to reportedly create a special deconfliction group in order to stop all the spies from spying on each other or effectively playing one massive uh, Washington network game of World of War. Now these documents show that federal agents are trained to quote, recreate the investigative path in order to effectively cover up where the information came from. And they are told to conceal this information not only from defense lawyers, but also from prosecutors and judges. The Guardian's calling this a horde of undercover orcs. 
Please break out the nerd to English, English to nerd dictionary and translate that for the rest of us. They are building false realities into which they want to induct you so they can play God. The overall effect of this technology is one that can control the mood, the attitudes, the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and thus the motivations and then the actions of the target. All day, every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It is infuriating. It is highly, highly illegal and it must be stopped now. The Human Genome Project was carried out at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab where I was a staff scientist for five years. They were tracking people in the lab by the electromagnetic frequency emitted by individual DNA. The DNA in every living thing has a unique frequency and signal. That is what they're using, what they're focusing on, and what they're weaponizing to completely control us. What they do is they go and get your garbage in front of your house and get your DNA. And then once they've got your DNA sequence, they can then go to a supercomputer and they can biocode directed energy attacks that will only go and bioresonate with your body. So that three people can be standing right next to you and nobody's going to feel the harassment except you because these signals are biocoded to your body's tuning only. And then they can send down D2K, they can send down any, any symptom they want because they're in full control of the bioresonance of your bioenergy. All they need is to, to kind of identify your DNA fingerprint like mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, with your name and then they can, they can watch you 24 hours a day. This is one part. The other part so we is... So we are running a GPS system. Yes. And so once you have connected the targeted individual with the frequency um, and they resonate together, then you have a perfect uh, avenue upon which to send and receive information back and forth. And that's exactly how they manipulate someone's thoughts. They send voices into someone's head. Uh, they manipulate their emotions. They manipulate their behavior. And then that's also how they receive back from the in individual in real time uh, the vital signs, the emotions, the thoughts, uh, what the person's seeing, what the person's hearing. And then all that information, of course, is rendered on a computer elsewhere uh, via software and it can be monitored and tracked in real time. They control the mind the same way that they teach the AI computer systems at the high level of AI. Okay, we're talking about AI that is so sophisticated that it operates a sentient world simulation, so sophisticated that it actually taps in and controls the mind. And he starts thinking about us being the qubits in some massive giant quantum computing simulation. It's almost as if they're either trying to harness or to recreate what is commonly referred to as a collective consciousness. If you construct a model of the human brain, you can then plug people into this hive mind. Robots the smartest people. Artificial intelligence, AI. The idea is to port the software from the human brain. And Google uh, was the primary uh, interested party that pulled this whole thing together. What they're going to do is apply this machine to an area that I think is fundamentally important. It's the crux of our future as humans. And that's, can we build machines like us? So rather than hardware and software, they're actually going to a new form of software, and that is the biological replacement of the human brain functioning as a quantum computer biologically and then loading people integrating people into this new form of brain there will be a virtual version of your brain as far as data is concerned of what molecules what chemicals and whatever make up the actual physical brain that data could be stored in the computer what i am principally is not this material stuff but a pattern of information well then if the pattern is the essence and if you copy the pattern to whatever level of precision you need then that copy that has the exact same pattern should be me you can make a good enough model of an entire brain and that model would have the same input output behavior as the original so if you talk to it it might talk back if you ask it to do things it might do them 
And if we could do that, everything would change. The quantum computer, they're trying to create neural networks. Well, what's the best way to create neural networks? Plug in the real brain, right? Because the simulations can happen, the quantum computer can simulate a human brain now. This is why you are receiving voice to skull transmissions. This is why you are being attacked with microwave and frequency weapons. You are unfortunately being used by the national security state, the military industrial intelligence complex of this country for the purposes of researching and developing highly sophisticated state-of-the-art technology that is primarily concerned with the human mind and how it operates, how to hack it, and how to harness its computing power to inform AI technology in the future and inform the computer systems of our military, military intelligence, and major corporations in this country. If you start looking at quantum computing and where it's going, it's pretty freaky sort of stuff. And thinking about the world as an electrical universe and the fact that we are energetic electrical beings, that's how we work. Everything is electrical. Every signal that runs through our body is electricity. Everything, every thought we have, everything we feel, every touch, every thing we speak, it's all the result of electromagnetic signals floating around our body, impulses that come from our heart, from our brain, the way we feel a bench when we touch it. This is an electrical signal that's sent to your brain that tells you what the bench feels like. So it's all electromagnetics. It's all firing of electromagnetism through our synapses and all this sort of stuff. The a diabetic quantum computer is linked to 7 billion human brains. It is now, in its own language of cryptology, able to function independent of any oversight throughout the world and with its own form of communication, its own form of code. And it is able to link everyone on the planet at this point. You cannot compromise. You cannot negotiate. You cannot surrender to a computer. It will continue to do what it is programmed to do.